Greetings once again, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Captain Spifori, and welcome back to the Asperger, where I sink shitty movies to the bottom of the sea. Anyways, if you're a fan of Mr. Enter, or if you're a fan of the 2000s era of Cartoon Network or Nickelodeon, you'll recognize this movie. Wait, sorry. It's based on a series of books written by Lewis Sacker, and a new one just came out the other year. Wayside School is basically a surreal series of children's novels about the titular school. This movie is a blonde piece of shit! Now I haven't really read the books, but my older sister read me a few stories from the first book once when I was younger, and I've certainly heard of it, but I don't really have the best familiarity with the books. But I'm not going to review this series based on how accurate it is to the books. I'm reviewing it based on how well written it is, and to at least show some respect to the books, how surreal it is. I do know from what I've read about the books is that it has a mix of surreal humor and nightmare fuel, kind of like Ren and Stimpy, Ed, Ed, and Eddie, and sometimes Spongebob were known for, but not necessarily with gross out. I absolutely do remember the what the fuck reaction I mentally had when my sister read me the story of Mrs. Gorf turning grade school children into edible objects for mild offenses. By the way, spoilers, this movie is not scary or surreal, it's just juvenile. And so is the cartoon. And no, I'm not going to review the entire show. I might someday, but I recently reviewed an entire show, and it was exhausting, and Sinking the Shit is mostly about movies, so let's begin. Okay, this art style definitely has a very Ren and Stimpy type look, but fuck is that music excessively happy. Is this a real psychotic weirdest grade school ever, or is it Disney's recess but super wacky? Anyways, this redhead who has a dumber looking version of Paul's haircut from Cry Wilderness is Todd. He's the new kid at school because I've never seen that before. Whoa, 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 hold up. What's with the umbrellas? It's science day in Mrs. Jewel's class. Okay, so that's one thing making this school a bit weird. I wonder how much more surreal it's going to get. <laughs> Anyways, Todd dies when this psychotic bitch on roller skates shoves him out of the way. Don't you know it's science day in Mrs. Jewel's class? You could have gotten... Crushed. Ah, oh, fuck. Is every romance I encounter in one of these stupid shits going to be unsettlingly abusive? So this Sundari also punches Todd because she's in love and in denial. Aw, oh, great. Now they're making anti-hedgehog propaganda. Sonic's gonna be pissed. Sir Todd meets Lewis, who is the janitor, groundskeeper, and basically an assistant. In the books, Lewis was basically a stand-in for Sacker himself, and had a rainbow mustache, so why didn't they keep that when they changed him into a hippie surfer stoner guy? He'd look like Freddie Mercury! Sir Lewis is the only other sane person besides Todd, and explains how Wayside came to be what it is. Well, this school was supposed to be one story high, one floor with 30 classrooms all in a row. But the Builder Man, he goofed. Instead, he built it like 30 stories high with one classroom on each floor. He said he was sorry. Anyways, Lewis also asks Todd about his backstory, but he doesn't reveal it. It's kind of a long story. <laughs> So Todd is a psychopath who caused mass destruction. Yeah, that's a protagonist. So they're implying Todd's an ex-delinquent? Actually, no, the actual twist is even stupider. So Todd asks where the elevators are, and Lewis explains that because the school was flipped sideways, there are none. Who builds a 30-story school without elevators? Who expresses surprise in such a dull tone? So Todd starts running up the stairs in a bunch of ladders because... Whew. Not bad for the second floor. Oh, fuck me. He clearly went up at least three stories. Don't fucking expect me to believe that was just one story because this school's magic. Do you mind? Sorry. Wow, Todd fucking smiled at that boy pissing. I'm starting to think Todd's just pretending to be a nice guy, every boy, when he's actually a juvenile delinquent and a fucking creep. 
So Todd comes across a classroom with a really low ceiling. What smelled in there, dude? He then sees a cow eating a f- Ugh, what the fuck is that cow eating fiberglass? That's fucking horrifying! I mean, that's gotta be incredibly fucking painful! Ignoring that fiberglass might be incredibly toxic. You know, if they showed the cow screaming in pain afterwards, this might be funny, since fiberglass looks harmless. Unfortunately, actual slapstick is something the show lacks. That said, random cows are a theme of the books, so yay for faithfulness. Attention students, attention. This is Principal Kid Swatter speaking. I'd like us all to welcome a new student to Wayside. His name is 344 South Fairview. That's the dude's address. That's his address? His name is Todd? Whatever. Like we need any more of these snot-nosed brats around here. Especially with his record. Did you see what he did at his last school? Oh, Kidswater just did to this 11 to 13 year old boy what Megan's Law regularly does to nonviolent convicts. It's funny if you intentionally read disturbing human rights abuse related subtext into it. By the way, this doesn't happen in real life. Students at school don't get misbehavior records unless they actually commit a crime. And well, Todd didn't. In fact, considering his personality, wouldn't Principal Kidswater want juvenile delinquents to come to the school? So Kid Swatter accidentally breaks his microphone, so Lewis, being the oh-so-sane person he is, doesn't call an electrician, and instead tries to fix it himself, and ends up causing a big problem later in the movie. So after six fucking minutes, Todd finally gets to the 30th floor, and we finally get a look at Mrs. Jewel's class. Très magnifique! That doesn't make her an artist, that makes her an art thief. Thank you, Steven, but it is not Halloween yet. It's not? Why does that matter? Anyway, she just collects their homework and throws it out the window. An A plus for everyone! Yeah! So then Todd comes in and Mrs. Jules thinks he's a monkey for no fucking reason. Yeah, here's a few tips. Random does not equal funny. Supernatural does not equal funny. And stupid does not equal funny. They can be funny if timed right, but here it's boring at best. And of course that asshole bitch is here. Marisha loves his hair. Marisha has shit taste in what haircuts she finds attractive then. Also, I know I said I'm mainly judging this film on its own, which I am, but that doesn't mean this film's failings don't partially come from the ways this film deviates from the books. Like Marisha here, she was apparently a nice girl in the books who liked ice cream, but here, she's basically a female drake from Pebble and the Penguin. Why the fuck did they even keep her name? From what I've read, she shares more in common with Joy, another character. In fact, it's like they have made a spiritual adaptation of the show, sort of like what Disney's Hercules is, but using the names of other characters from the source material and switching them around. By the way, I'm using spiritual adaptation extremely loosely. Mrs. Jules tells the class to welcome Todd, but instead they make random ass faces at him without even saying their names. Yeah, thanks Wayside, we don't need to know these characters' names. They do nothing whatsoever. I mean, fuck, this is one of the few times where you can tell but don't have to show, and they don't even tell! Also, in the scene where Mrs. Jules was collecting homework, she mentions some of their names, but they don't tell Todd this. Yeah, Todd, just guess their names, you bowl cut wearing pussy! We heard about you on the PA, Todd. What happened at your last school? Did you break any rules at your old school? Because we have rules here too, but <laughs> you'll need to know what they are before you break them. She's saying it's impossible to violate the rules without knowing what they are first. Man, that's a face that says, Will they let me grow my hair into a mullet for once and not make me look like I'm from a boy band? The goldenrod sheets, you'll find brief files of all students and faculty. Files on all students too? Fuck, this crazy bitch is from the NSA! Yes, please. I'm sure Todd will tell us all about his sad and tragic past someday. Actually, it's not that sad or tragic. Sure about that? You were clearly traumatized by whatever happened. 
Mrs. Jules then demands Todd take a seat and then throws it out the window and then writes his name down on a discipline list and says that after a check mark and a circling, she'll have to send him home early on the kindergarten bus. The check mark, I guess, is understandable. It clearly means she hates Twatter, but listen to her tone. I think I hear talking, Todd. Were you following directions? This isn't just seasonal rot Spongebob type unnecessary mean humor. This is Mrs. Jules deliberately being a dick. On the other hand, a normal kid would probably love getting sent home early. And what gets Todd's name circled and him sent home early is him noticing the walls moving like a trash compactor when Kids Water turns on the intercom again. Smooth move there, pothead. Anyways, the next day, Dana and this kid who looks like he's in his 50s are posting class president campaign posters all over the school, as if the class president of Mrs. Jewell's class is the prime minister of the whole school. Time to whip this school into shape. When a problem comes along, you must whip it before the queen sets out too long. So Todd fixes some things around the school and gets brief help carrying his own desk from Dana and her prematurely balding friend. Of course! Every great leader is but a humble public servant. Dana? I'm his campaign manager. It's my job! Okay, that was kind of funny. <laughs> enough with the fun! Yeah, enough with the fun, because there was never fun to begin with, bitch! Oh, please! The only thing the class president is supposed to do is turn the classroom lights on and off. Then what the fuck is even the point of class president? Nothing in this cartoon is even remotely surreal, it's just fucking stupid. Why are you all sitting in the dark? Because someone forgot to turn on the lights. Who? Oh, forgetful fiddlesticks! Oh, fiddlesticks. Another psychotic Marisha moment leads to Todd meeting the lunch lady, Mrs. Marsh, who has a drawer labeled Mrs. Jules class, and inside is a dead rat. I hope that's not one of the rats from Nim, because if so, something worse than Nim has got them. Anyways, in Mrs. Marsh's room, Todd discovers a corrosive glowing green substance. You just missed the election. What took you so long? Oh, Todd, so glad you could make it. By the way, can I borrow that desk from- Oh, thank you. Excellent work, Todd. Please take your seat. Fuck you, you pig-haired bitch. You're doing this on purpose just so you can be an ass. Anyways, Mrs. Jules is counting the votes, and one of them is a love letter Marisha wrote to Todd. Yeah, plush all you want, idiot. You put the thing in the damn ballot box. By the way, when Mrs. Jules counts the votes, she mentions students from the books that weren't in the cartoon. I don't mean to embarrass you, Todd, but I think this is yours. So he sent that to himself, according to Mrs. Jules? Anyways, it turns out to be a tie, and... Did everyone just vote for themselves? Yes, yes Mrs. Mrs. Jules! I didn't vote for myself, Mrs. Jules. Yes, you did, Todd! You sent yourself the bossy love letter, so now I'm checking your name on the discipline list for being a narcissist! Losing the election causes Myron to have a heart attack, so Dana takes him to the school nurse who... Miss Mush is not really. But fuck that shit! Kidswater has banned the word door, which is something straight out of the books. This would be funny until you realize some dumbass Christian fundamentalists consider prick, screw, spick, bugger, and bloody in the UK offensive. So Todd tries to warn the class about the walls moving again, but gets sent home for drawing on the floor with chalk. It looks like the floor is waxed, so it shouldn't be hard to get chalk off the floor. So the next day, another class election is held, and another tie ensues because all the students think they can run the class. These bastards have no individual personalities to make them shine out of Dana, Myron, and Mauricio. Because the system is rigged to ensure conformity! Kidswater is also running, which makes sense. The class presidency of Mrs. Jules' class is gonna decide whether or not Wayside is going to become a military school or not! So the school rules mandate that a game of dodgeball solves tight elections, which Lewis referees. I highly doubt he's going to be impartial. He's a filthy stoner! He's gonna vote for drugs to be legalized on campus! 
Anyways, Todd aimlessly tries to warn Kidswater about the moving wall, but fails. But Kidswater loses too, so he goes back inside to figure skate. No, oh, ho, ho, the guy does something feminine. So Todd tells Lewis about what happened at his previous school. This is starting to make me think of Holes, another story by Lewis Sacker, except shittily adapted. Here's what happened. I used to go to a plain old one-story school. And I've always been the kind of guy who likes to help out. Then one day, I saw the kindergarten class needed some help. Sound. So Todd used to be good with the younger kids, but isn't now. Okay, so apparently Todd didn't get in trouble, but sunk his reputation. Lewis offhandedly mentions the blueprints, which makes Todd wonder. Also, Dana wins. What about Myron? He should be class president, not me! Sorry, you caught the ball. And Myron, you are not class president. <laughs> Shit! Move the fuck over, Martians in BKM mode and Mouse Bromley tried to kill. Myron owns your fucking asses in super strength. Back at class, Mrs. Jules reveals that she's Jimmy Durante, as portrayed in Frosty the Snowman in drag. Todd also tries to get her attention regarding the moving walls. But look at what it says right next to our classroom. T.R. Ash Contractor. It doesn't say T.R. Ash Contractor. It says trash compactor. We're in a giant trash compactor. He would put it where it belongs. In the gym? No, the kitchen. Exactly, the kitchen. Yes, but that's where he put Mrs. Jewel's class. Oh wow, that's both stupid in an actually funny way and a kind of a brilliant plot twist. Todd gets sent home for this, but this time he decides fuck that shit. But I've been studying those blueprints you told me about. And check out the trash compactor. And now every time Principal Kidswater gets on the PA, the walls start to close in. So then Myron somehow breaks into the office to declare himself class president, and Mrs. Jules and her class learn the hard way that Todd was right, and they wouldn't be around for that lesson to mean anything. I say Todd should let those fuckers burn in hell. Not since the mermaids from James Pond have I ever seen such ungrateful cunts. This is all my fault! I'm the worst president ever! Oh, don't try, Dana. You're just gonna be squashed, and you're not gonna die. But fuck, I hate it when these soccer and kid shows avoid the concept of death like it's fucking poor! And this is Wayside School, the bizarrest grade school around. For all I know, getting crushed might not really kill them. So Todd starts randomly pushing buttons, one of them sends Lewis down a chute to the office, and all the others make the school dance like one of those cacti from the Super Mario Bros. 3 map. Wait, those aren't cacti? Silly me. The big red button turns out to have sent Lewis down to the office, and he tells Myron to get off the intercom. Unfortunately, Kidswater finishes sviggy-skating and gets back to use the intercom again. Luckily, Miss Mush thinks Todd is hungry and brings the acid soup, which Todd uses to rot the door away. But it takes a while, so Marisha gets horny for him. Fluffy, he thinks I'm hot. Careful, Marisha, this whole thing could explode on us. Just let it, Todd. Let it explode. Please, 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 make it fucking explode in Marisha's face! Nope, it doesn't. Oh no, Marisha's porcupine is stuck on the light. Todd saves them, but instead of getting out of there immediately, Marisha stays behind just so she can force herself on Todd. What a wonderful reward for risking his life. You know what I just realized? Todd and Marisha are exactly like Marina and Hubie from Pebble and the Penguin, but gender flipped. And Marisha is also like Drake. Wonderful, what a charming romance. Thankfully, Myron turns off the intercom by turning off the light switch. 
The movie ends with Todd being given another desk and being accepted into the class. And you're not gonna throw it out the window? Oh no, that was when we were studying gravity. You tossed my desk out the window just to see how fast it would fall? Which he then throws out the window, because it's oh so touching now that Todd has become insane like the rest of them. That was Wayside the movie. It sucked. There were some funny moments, and it had potential, but it failed because it mistook big lipped gators for humor, and bathos for actual nightmare fuel. There's actually failed potential in many aspects of this movie, like the characters, art style, and humor. This show could have gone with a deranged Ren and Stimpy and Ed and Nerdy look going off its flat Hanna-Barbera and Jay Ward style, but everything is blandly on model, and it only gets off model when it's clearly an animation error. They could have done bizarre things with the tropes shown in these types of kids cartoons, but instead they just made a bunch of bland shit I've seen in plenty of other shows, but just made it slightly more wacky! Part of the problem is that barely any of the students have any actual personality contributing to the weirdness. Instead, most of them just conform to the weirdness. Actually, no, just blabbing on doesn't describe how cliché this show is. Let me tell you how I would have written this shit. Todd is the new kid at Wayside School and is very shy and gets bullied, so he transfers here because he heard most of the students at Wayside are nice and not very judgmental. However, he doesn't expect the school to be a skyscraper, he doesn't expect most of the students and faculty to be batshit insane, and most of all, he doesn't expect the principal to be an outright dictator. He meets Lewis, the janitor, who is a former rock star whose music Todd enjoys. However, Todd gets harassed by Mauricia, who is a misandrist feminist and also a creep who excessively flirts with boys in an aggressive manner, and Todd is her latest target, but in this version, Marisha's behavior is treated as evil, and she's a female Gaston. Todd gets to Mrs. Jewel's class, and the other students introduce themselves by name. There's an election for class president, and it's built up to be very important, and it's later revealed that the class president just turns on the lights. But the actual student in charge is whoever Kidswater decides should be in charge, and that student is Myron, an idiotic brat who is in a power struggle with Marisha. Todd later discovers that some of the students occasionally report bullies to Kidswater, but they get captured and turned into apples. He also befriends Dana, an obsessive geek who is overtly proud of Wayside's wackiness, but aware of the insanity of Wayside and able to help newcomers. Unfortunately, Dana trusts Myron too much, who is very selfish. Dana gets on Marisha's bad side by being friends with Todd, and Marisha sings a villain song about how all the boys are her property, and is planning on brainwashing them with mind-altering foods Mish Mush cooks, and Myron is planning on- You know what? Fuck! This concept doesn't do well in a movie, it works in a TV show! In fact, most reviews I've seen of Wayside talk about the show. Is it better? Not really. I haven't even read the books, and I say stick with the books. This is Captain Swifari signing out, and next time, oh boy, I'm gonna be reviewing something really bad. <laughs>